For about a third of the world's population, fish is a staple part of their diet, and millions of people depend on fishing for their livelihood. But the world's oceans are being stripped of stock at alarming rates and threatening the future of many and putting the ocean's delicate ecosystem at risk. We travel to the waters of the Caribbean, where the danger is very real. Trinidad and Tobago. Its Caribbean waters once supplied a very lucrative fishing industry worth hundreds of millions of dollars. But all that's changed. Its value has plummeted by more than half, causing some 1,000 fishermen to worry. It's a phenomenon happening across the globe as fish stocks dwindle. The reasons, fishing techniques that slowly erode the ocean's ecosystem, and many argue the dangerous effects of drilling for oil and natural gas under the ocean floor. About the last five years ago, we used to catch fish by four, five hundred pounds. No, you can't hold a hundred pound of fish. 43-year-old dragon has spent nearly a quarter of a century fishing these waters, depending on the sea to support a wife and two children. He says he's watched his livelihood slip away. The problem was evident back in mid-2009, when thousands of dead fish washed ashore on Trinidad's southwestern tip. Not even the birds ate the carcasses. The whole beach side was just dead fish. The whole sea floating. Stink. Some environmental activists believe it was the drilling that was largely to blame. Trinidad and Tobago is the fifth largest exporter of natural gas in the world producing more than 115 million cubic meters daily. While a bounty of gas may lie under the ocean floor, the only way to access its precious commodity is to blast it out of the bottom of the sea. Underground rock is fractured and natural gas is released and then pumped back to the surface all creating seismic blasts which many here, like local environmental leader Gary Abood, argues is killing the fish. And when you do seismic surveys which are currently being conducted and are conducted randomly in Trinidad and Tobago, the innards of the fish explode. Environmentalists also believe another factor contributing to the dwindling supply may be leaking platforms and chemical runoff. The community did demand the authorities investigate exactly why the thousands of fish washed ashore in 2009. They just come and take some pictures, and that was it. They never heard nothing again. We checked with Trinidad and Tobago's Institute of Marine Affairs and learned that water samples were in fact tested shortly after the incident, but they wrote in an email response to us water quality tests found nothing unusual. Livelihoods are very important to us. People's lives are very important to us. Carolyn Sipasad Bachin, former minister of Trinidad and Tobago's energy sector, says that while she has no specific knowledge of why the beaches were littered with dead fish, accidents in the oil and gas industry do happen. Our state-owned companies, they have some aged infrastructure, so we have had several leaks. But, she says, the country is committed to ensuring the safety of the water and the fishing industry, even if that means closing platforms. If there is an issue, we prefer to shut down, and that has been happening currently throughout all our operations. Um, there are many areas that we have shut down because of health and safety risk. While this is helpful, Dragon and his friends continue to worry about their futures, saying that their smaller hauls, together with higher gas prices that they need to pay, 
are actually causing them to lose money. The taxi, the shopkeeper, everybody depends upon oil and diesel. President of the Fishermen's Association, Isuk Ali, says the dwindling fish stock affects the entire community. Even the retailers and the wholesalers depend on all of that. So you see the effect it's taking about how many people's lives. This vendor agrees. If the fishermen don't catch fish, we don't have anything to sell. <laughs> Making matters worse still, the fishing industry here is facing another challenge drastically restricted opportunities for fishing. This rock, known as Soldado, marks the maritime border cut-off point between Trinidad and Tobago and neighboring Venezuela. For years, Trinidadian fishermen fished here without problems. But now, if they go too close, Venezuelan authorities are seizing the boats and restricting their movement, all in an effort to keep stocks plentiful for their own fishermen. And there's yet another major threat, trawling. Deep sea trawlers fishing for shrimp erode the seabed, wreck nesting areas and force fish to find new feeding spots. Shrimp trawlers also disrupt the sea's delicate ecosystem by accidentally trapping smaller fish within their catches fish that are a vital source of food for larger marine life. According to a United Nations report, if trawling worldwide continues at its current rate, the world's oceans may be completely stripped of fish within the next 40 years. Something that would be devastating for Dragon, who spent his lifetime fishing. And the fish not staying, it's moving. And it's a killer to the sea. For Dragon and so many others, protecting the ocean is critical in saving his livelihood. Fishing is what they have done for generations. And like their forefathers, it's a matter of survival. Mm -hmm.